I would like to learn more about weird urban legends. Like what you call it? Like a Koreans saying that they can't fall asleep while there's a fan on because then they'll die. Their body can't adjust to the temperature and the fan will chop up the oxygen molecules and whatever, whatever. It basically causes, they call it fan death. For me, it was when our kids were born. I'd go to my parents' house and their friends were there. They would always be like, where's her beanie? We're talking about it's now 107 degrees in the middle of June and July. And they want my, my, my baby to be wearing a beanie to protect her because she can't regulate temperature. That seems odd. Yeah, I was also told by the nurse, I think she was Jamaican. She was telling me not to take the baby out for the first 10 days because, well, they're not going to be able to adapt to the human world. My initial thought was, well, we have to take them out of the hospital to the outdoors to get right. the baby into the car. That's why I wish I was raised by Spartans. They, they apparently don't believe in any of that. <laughs> Throw them on the rocks. Warning, the following podcast contains language not suitable for younger listeners. You have been warned. Now beamed from the fortified bunker below Culver City, California, this is Well, That Happened. Anyway, welcome kids to Well, That Happened, the most magical time of the week when we come to your house and teach you lessons. All sorts of lessons. Huh. I just went weird. How you doing, Jeffrey Potts? Todd Elliott, sir. I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty fucking awesome. Sam Renderos, what's the word, baby? Uh, the word of the week is emergent turd. A poop that comes out so that comes on so suddenly that one fears they may not be able to make it to the toilet. Hmm. Emergent turd. Oh, so it's like emergency turd, not emerging like it is emerging from the no, depths. It's, it's not a turtle head. It's just, ooh, this feeling of me having to take a shit is now so immense. I got to get to a bathroom ASAP. All right. And so this week, this just came out. They have, they have been growing produce on the International Space Station, right? Yeah. As you guys know, they've been working on, they've been working on making it habitable, right? Right. People have been living there, but all the supplies have been brought up from Earth. Well, they've been working on growing produce. They've harvested, and they are now starting to eat the produce that huh. is on – that they are growing. They're not eating it all. They're, they're cleaning it. They're taking care of it. They're, they're preserving what they eat and some of it into, I guess, rot-proof rags or however the fuck that works to ship back down to NASA so they can study it to make sure that all the nutrients are there and everything's good because – they still don't really have all the information, but they're growing different produce to eat. It'd be interesting if they got an emergent turd from it. <laughs> right. But I think it's exceptionally cool that we are working towards becoming sustainable in space. Now, they're sending down the plant samples or stool samples to NASA to explore? I guarantee you they're doing both. Oh, I, I could imagine. They didn't say stool samples in the article I read, and it was on actually – Boingboing.com, I think. Boingboing.com. Not the a porn p- site. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boing, hey, boing, I get boing. news from all over the place. No, I get that. I get and that. Boing Boing sometimes has interesting yeah. articles. The question that I have is, okay, so now we have the produce, and let's say it's safe. Most likely it would be. What, what, what's the next step? How do you? Because for me, knowing what I know about space travel is the deterioration of muscle tissue. So that's right. where, what do we do to combat that? In space. The only thing I know of that they have done so far is they created a – I guess the best way to put it would be a treadmill with straps where they strap themselves down you know, very tightly onto a treadmill and then run on it. So they're pushing against essentially the force of the space station and then they're moving forward for cardiovascular exercise. Now that's not going to solve all the issues with muscle muscular deterioration – and you also have bone density loss, which I have no idea how they're going to fix that. But they are taking steps towards remedying this. Well, at some point, they'll just have to have like a – have you ever seen 2001 a Space Odyssey? You know, they just have that spinning section. Because mm-hmm. if you do spinning, that will, that will simulate gravity in some respects. Not as much gravity, but you can, in fact, simulate gravity by spinning something. So that's why if you're ever in one of those theme park rides and it's going around really fast – it almost feels like that you're no longer standing up. You're kind of laying down because the gravity is starting to shift for you and you start to feel like 
you're being pulled against the wall. That's which that, they call that centripetal force. Yes, yes, yes. And but that will simulate some sort of gravity. My question, though, to you guys: has, Did you ever, when you're in elementary school, have the tomato seeds that you had to grow that were in space? No, no, no. Okay, I guess I was I, the only one. I grew up in a third world country. Oh, okay, Southern Ohio. I well, I grew up in I guess the second world country. Northern Ohio. <laughs> you grew up near a big city. And I grew up yeah. in Los Angeles. Well, apparently they had they sent up the these seeds, the t- tomato seeds mm-hmm. in the like the space shuttle back in the day when it was still running. And I guess they were in space for a little while and they brought them back down. They're like, "Here kids, grow these seeds. See if they've changed at all." Is that what they told you kids? I mean, that's what they told us. Y- you know, you see commercials for, "Hey, buy your own star." Here, kids, these tomatoes were in space. These seeds grow. I did that. Bought I, a star? I bought a star for my brother for his 15th birthday, I think. As a joke? No, I didn't know any better. It was when it was becoming <laughs> popular, and I was in college, and I didn't... I was like, I don't know what to get for my 15-year-old brother, so I bought him a star. <laughs> you can ask him about it when he's here next week. Tanner. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. All right. Yeah, there are so many stars, though. It doesn't matter. No, Because there, there's, like... Billions upon billions upon billions of stars. Well, you saw, you've seen that the the what do they call it? The deep vision Hubble thing, where they looked at the yeah. area of space the size of a quarter. Yeah, and there's a thousand galaxies yeah. in that area. Yeah, it's like well, they show that 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 little picture, and it's like, see all those stars? Those aren't stars; those are galaxies. It's like, oh, well, yeah. And they zoom in. They have it actually at the Griffith Observatory. They have it blown up. Oh, really? And it's so fucking cool. Huh. It, it is so cool. Well, I, did you watch it? Um, clearly, you watched the video of how they lifted up the entire Griffith Park Observatory and then built the basement level to expand. Yeah. So oh, wow. they kept the original they built architecture the- intact and they dug below it and built the basement level and then sat the building back on top. Oh, wow. And so they expanded on the planets, and they go, we know Pluto's not a planet anymore, but, you know, this is still information about it. That's where they put the Spock Theater. Yeah. Yeah. The fun. Leonard Nimoy Theater of Pointy Ears. Nice. But if we can grow our own produce. True. We can die in space. Oh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, yesterday me and Jeff went to the Two T's in the Pod Schlitzapalooza. Yeah. Check that out some fun. bands. Met uh, Travis, one of the guys from Two T's at a Pod. Had a good chat with him. It was a fun time. Unfortunately, we had to do research for the podcast, so we had to leave early. Yeah. And with that, I've got an emergent turd, so let's move on. <laughs> Citizen Badass. I love this part. That's right. The new Citizen Badass of the Week is a nominee that we all agree on. You let us know what you think at facebook.com slash WTH podcast and all the other social media stuff that we have. Because, God damn it, I am not going to go through all of it. Because there's a ton. All right, so our Citizen Badass of the Week is 35-year-old Richard Luthman. He is a lawyer, and he went to court this past week and demanded a trial by combat. Yeah. What? He says that this is a matter of honor. This man, Richard Luthman, he it's basically a legal case that stems from 2013 that was a dispute between two investment firms. Luthman represented the losing side. And his client disappeared and never paid the more than $500,000 in judgments against him. So they're going after Luthman. I'm sorry. I want to make sure that I'm following because if I'm following, then I'm pretty sure the audience can because I'm pretty dumb. So this guy represented a company. They lost, disappeared. Yeah. And so now the people that were suing his client – are going after the attorney for the money? They're going after his malpractice insurance because they claim that Luthman helped his client hide assets to avoid payout. And now his client's gone. And Luthman's like, this is not a lawsuit anymore. This is an absurdity. So I will give them an absurdity in kind. I'd go clad in the armor of Robert Baratheon, Warhammer. He wants a Game of Thrones-esque trial by combat. He wants a moon door and everything. So is he going to get a champion like the mountain or how's it going to work? What's wrong with this guy? Oh wait, no, he's an attorney. Never mind. I got that. Yeah. I mean, he's just a a fun, (laughs) a fun attorney asking the courts to give him permission to dispatch the plaintiffs and their counsel to the divine providence of the maker. 
Huh. Well, that's a novel way to do it. Will he be able to? Well, according to the plaintiffs, they said that it should be clear that they don't agree with the brief. They find they don't find it amusing. They don't think it's funny, and they think the courts will side with him because of a legal and ethical uh, perspective. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So now they're going to court again to be sure that they can go to court for trial by combat. <laughs> like this is going to court, so we can go to court, so we can settle. The dispute of a court case. What? There comes a point when there's just there's too much court. This involved. is fucking insane. To quote Macbeth, first let's kill all the lawyers. This lawsuit is crazy. So he's put in the motion for a trial by combat. He says he's ready to go. The opposing plaintiffs, they're like, we just want our money. This is getting absolutely crazy. When you go to law school, do they have a class on putting in a motion for trial by combat? Because <laughs> holy shit, that's the best loss. Oh, no, it's a correspondence course. I get it. It's from Arizona State. No, what's that? Phoenix. What the fuck's that online Phoenix university Univers- doesn't mean yeah. anything? Phoenix University. Yeah, Phoenix University online, the one that doesn't actually mean a goddamn thing. Is that where he got his law degree? I don't know where he got his law degree from, but honestly... You know he's been trained well as a lawyer because he's been looking for the smallest thing that he can get some leeway on. And I guess he said that while we were still under rule from the British in 1776, that when they swapped you know, governments, they didn't establish that this kind of thing was not allowed. So it's still technically in the books. But- That's not really the way it works, but... Because when you change governments, all the preceding laws and regulations no longer apply. Because otherwise, we'd be paying the the king's, or I'm sorry, the queen's coin in order to serve in the military. Well, my question really is: is is this really becoming a way to get off of a lawsuit? I plead fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Let's say they go. All right. If all of a sudden, Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg says, "All right, fine, go for it. Let's see what you got." And then they go to trial by combat. And then this dude kills somebody. Then what happens? Ultimately, here's the thing. is It's not going to go – it's not going to work. And I'll tell you why it's not going to work. I, I bet Ruth Bader Ginsburg goes for it because that bitch is crazy. <laughs> well, no. The Supreme Court established that you cannot use a supreme being as evidence or ghost spectral – spectral evidence as, a, as evidence. So by saying that you invoke – God to decide, therefore you're invoking a spectral slash supernatural being and therefore it won't work. To recap, because we have not said it on the air yet, when did he invoke a supreme being? Uh, he asked, I just stated that he wanted... You did state it? I did, did I miss it? it? I'm sorry, missed it. I missed it. When he asked the courts to grant him permission to dispatch the plaintiffs and their con- uh, counsel to the divine yeah. providence of the maker, therefore stating, hey... Let God decide. Apparently, I don't listen when you talk. It's and I'm fine. Sorry it happens. It, Jeff has paid attention, so it's one battle at a time here. <laughs> <laughs> eh, you know, I try. Okay, yeah, and that and that right there should mean that it would immediately get thrown out by the lesser court because once the Supreme Court has made a decision, the lesser courts are obliged to follow suit, except for that motherfucker in Kentucky who still refuses to recognize gay marriage. So that's that why guy needs to be lynched. Is a girl. The person in Kentucky? Yeah. I don't see gender, Jeff. It's it's gender neutral in the eyes of the law. Well, when I go to a club and I've drank a few I try really hard to see my the the gender. It's like, hey baby, how you doing? If if he responds, mm mm. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we just went left. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Jeff, Jeff has had some interesting experiences, I see. <laughs> yeah, so Luthman is the citizen badass because what a step to take to try to not be held accountable for the actions of your client that you may have helped hide money. No, you know what? You're right. I fucking forgot what bit we were doing. Holy shit. Yeah, I support this motherfucker all the way. <laughs> I want to see this trial by combat. I want it televised. I want American Gladiator. I support it 100%. So let us know what you think. Facebook.com slash WTH Podcast or follow us on Instagram, WTH Podcast. And let us know. We have emails and stuff like that. We have links all over the place. So, and, and if you've had an experience of trial by combat, we would love to hear it. Indeed. Let's move on. All right. It's time for Jeff Lies and WTH. All right. Every single week, I'm going to bring four news articles. One is real. The others I have made up. 
I lie. I lie all the time. And it is your job, it is Todd and Sam's job, to figure out which one is the real article. And you too can play at home. This week's theme is River Runs That Blew It. River Runs That Blew It. Yep. Man, it sounds like an emergent turd if I ever heard one. Indeed. Alrighty, article number one. Environmental group to filter Amazon River. Way to go, <laughs> Way to go Greenpeace. Uh, Jeff Bezos, he's awesome. Article two. Cops dredge river. Find four guns traced to murders. Welcome to New York City. Article three. Whitewater tours plummet as Snake River dries. And article four. EPA crew accidentally turns the Animus River orange. Those are the articles. Mm, nice. Tell me which one is the real article. Sam, it is your turn this week to I go first. I was going to let Haley go first. Haley? Well, last week she got on me. She was like, you never make Sam go first. And I was like, all right, fine. Sam's going first this week. Oh, I, I really, it doesn't matter to me who goes first or last or any of that. I know. Um, but, yeah, Haley's not here, so I'll, I'll go first, I guess. I know, that's why I was doing cricket noises. Oh, those are terrible cricket noises. All right, so let's see here. That's Environmental cool. group to filter Amazon River. It wouldn't surprise me if... An environmental group such as Greenpeace were to do such a thing. Really? But I'm, I'm interrupting you here because no environmental group would filter the river because the sediment is what the and all the little critters live on. But you forget that they would be suburban, college-educated people that don't know any better. You know that's probably the one, right? Yeah, probably. Cops dredge river. They do that all the time, and they can't find guns. They find bodies. That's what the river's for. Number three, huh. white water tours plummet as Snake River dries. No, because you can make it a playground for the kids to run around and be like, look, <laughs> there was a river here. Go play, kids. Watch out for the snakes. They bite. I'm going to go with EPA crew accidentally turns the Animus River orange because it sounds like someone fucked up and they did a die job. I know they do that every year in Chicago. They turn the Chicago River. Yeah. Green, what a, right? They turn it green. And I know the Cleveland River caught on fire like Cuyahoga in the 70s yeah yeah wait really yeah, yeah really. there's so much True pollution story. in the river water that one day I don't know exactly how it happened but the river caught on fire like there was just so much chemical build up on the surface that it's just that's either flowing somewhere. into Lake Erie that's yep. fucking hilarious yeah that was one of like those iconic moments of people being like okay seriously we have to clean some stuff there's up. um there's a brewery out of Cleveland called the Great Lakes Brewery Company. And they have different beers named after things that are popular from Cleveland. Elliot, they have the Elliot Ness Lager because Elliot Ness was originally from Cleveland. And then they have one that's the, the Burning River Ale. It's spicy. That's yeah, and it's, it's so <laughs> spicy. It's not, it's not good. No. That's what but they, it's cool. Right. That's where Hollywood got its ideas for those sequences when someone's swimming under burning water. Right. They got it from the river. Well, no, that just looks cool. Well, where do you think they got the idea from? From the burning river. Eh, that's true. Yeah. So I'm going right. to go with four. Okay. I really want to go with one, especially since I made fun of it and saying that it's definitely not it. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure that it is it. That is the environmental group to filter the Amazon River because that is such unbelievable bullshit. That it's probably true, <laughs> but I'm really, I got to go with the whitewater tours plummet as the Snake River dries because right. we're in a drought. Okay. And I know the rest of the world's not, but California is, and I'm, I'm egotistical and self-centered. Okay. Whoops, and I'm dropping shit. That's okay. Okay, so you all agree that the environmental group to filter Amazon River is a lie, and that is a lie. I made that one up. That is not true. There is no environmental group trying to filter the river. Although I was thinking, you know, maybe they're trying to get rid of trash. But, you know, hey, whatever. Um, the fish eat that trash, Jeff. That's yeah. an important part of the ecosystem. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure eating trash is not good for them, though. Yeah. No, there is an entire subspecies of Amazonian fish that their diet consists of the styrofoam shit from McDLTs. McDLTs. No one eats those anymore. They're going to go They extinct. do in the Amazon. Oh, okay. Okay, well, article number two. Cops dredge river. Find four guns traced to murders. You all agree that that one is a lie, and that one is a lie. I made that one up. That is not true. All right, so going right, on to number Sam, three. You and I, face to face. White water tours plummet as Snake River dries. This article is a lie. I made that one up. Oh. Booyah! I one time took a whitewater trip down the Snake River. It was quite fun. It was very fun. Snake but, River. But wider is, than a mile. As far as I know, still flowing freely. 
So that means, Sam, you are correct. The EPA crew accidentally turns the Animus River orange. Well done, sir. Yeah, they were trying to m remove mine water, which accidentally spilled into the river, and it was full of minerals, especially iron, which turned the rust color orange, and they're pretty much sure that... And it was an accident, so they're pretty much sure that's going to have a lot of fish death and plant loss. Yeah, it is. So, that's iron oxide, baby. Yeah. Good job, EPA. That's heavy metal poison. Yep. EPA fucked it up. Environmental fuck it up agency is what they should call them now. That was Jeff Lazen, WTH. Moving on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for that weekly event where we go head to head to head in nominating somebody for an ass kicking. Jeff, let us know the fucking rules. All right, rule number one is that each host has one minute on the clock to present their nominee for the ass kickery. Rule number two is that no host can vote for themselves. And rule number three is that there will be no dead children, no kids, etc. That's right. And you can let us know who you think needs their ass kicked at Facebook.com slash WTH Podcast, Instagram, WTH Podcast, emails, and all that other stuff on those pages. So let us know. Drop by. Follow us. You are our WTH Army. All righty. Who would like to go first this week? I'll do it. All right. Sam Renderis, are you ready? I am ready. Three, two, one, ass kick. The people who need their ass kicked this week are the Republicans of Red State, a conservative organization who decided to uninvite Donald Trump for his insult, uh, insinuating that Megyn Kelly was tough on him because she was being hormonal, or a.k.a. on her period. This was too far for them during the... This was this comment about Megyn Kelly. Eric Anderson, leader of Red State, wrote, There are even lines blunt talkers and unprofessional politicians should not cross. Decency is one of those lines. So now it's too far, but it's okay for Trump to call undocumented immigrants rapists? Get out of here. You guys need your ass kicks for allowing Donald Trump for going on this long and not taking a stand earlier, but you guys don't care about minorities anyway. Only women who are half of our society and will give you potential votes to elect somebody as president. Oh, those people you don't want to offend. Not the uprising number of immigrants and for that reason ass kicking all right that's it times up. red state red state they they're they're a group they're a conservative pool. organization that they have invited the uh presidential nominees to discuss they decided to uninvite him all righty awesome i will go next if that's all right all sure right thing jeffrey all righty jeffrey marker potts are you ready i am marker awesome on your mark get set ass kick person I think needs their ass kicked this week is Judge Randall Rogers. Why does he need his ass kicked? Well, because he was presented a case when a man by the name of Justin, Justin Bundy hit another guy. Yes, he just punched him in the jaw. So his sentence to him was he had to marry his 19-year-old girlfriend and write down <laughs> Bible verses and attend counseling that the judge gives as punishment for punching the other guy. Now, cruel and unusual punishment. You're going to force this 20-year-old dude to marry the girl? What if the girl doesn't like him? What if she's like, oh, hell no. That's a punishment for her as well. I mean, have we asked her if she's okay with this? Maybe she's not. And then writing down Bible verses? What the fuck? Who, who, who are you? Why, why are you a judge? Stop. Stop. You need your ass kicked. Stop punching strange things. Jeff, what, where is he from? Texas. And it's the judge's niece? No, no, no. It's not the niece. It's just some girl. Like his, his, it's just his 19 year old girlfriend. What was his name? The judge? Judge was Randall, Judge Randall Rogers. Who that be? Judge Randall Rogers. I'm sorry. He so could be a Judge track. Randall Rogers said, fine, you're going to punch people. You got to marry your girlfriend. Yeah, pretty much. Because uh, I, I swear you said niece or cousin or something. Yeah, no, no, it's just his girl, his, his girlfriend. Like it, if you can't years. do the crime, you'll have to do the time. Yeah. You have to. You have to get married. And just, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, he's like, your punishment is you have to get married. What the fuck? <laughs> that may be the most exciting thing I've heard all day. <laughs> all right. Todd, Christian, Elliot, are you ready? Yep, sure am. All right, Mark. That's it. Ass kick. I'm actually going to tie back into yours, Sam. My ass kicking this week is Donald Trump because specifically he said you could see she had blood coming out of her eyes. She had blood coming out of her wherever. 
clearly this guy hates women and doesn't understand that he doesn't have x-ray vision. You can't see someone when they're bleeding out of their wherever when they're wearing clothes. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with Donald? Oh, wait, no, that's not why I want his ass kicked. I mean, it is, but he's just an asshole. Fuck Donald Trump. The end. And with 24 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, I know. That, I, that was short and sweet, and it was a cheap... Short and sweet. It was cheap, but I saw Donald Trump saying this about women, and he's alienating voters and just making an ass of himself, and it's about time someone kicks his ass. Alrighty. I guess I'll go first, since you both have this about to say... Different sides, though, which is Different interesting. Different sides, but it's kind of... Sam funny. is kind of defending Donald Trump. I'm not defending... No, I, you are. Your, your ass kick no. is defending Donald Trump. You said... Well, so what if he goes after women? Pretty, no, pretty sure no, my, well, my position was for them to allow... They've allowed him to go this far. He said ridiculous shit already. I'm like, oh, now it's gone too far. Oh, you know who should have been the ass kick for all of us? Hmm. Fucking television producers. Because they let him talk. Well, he's saying these I mean, incendiary he, things, so everyone's like, oh, what's he going to say next? And he's he's basically the political version of Howard Stern. But for me, now it's... All of a sudden, now they're saying, oh, well, now he's going too far. He's been going this far for a long time. I'm like, and this organization is like, oh, now we're taking a stand. Now? Well, do you know why? Because he's posing a threat to the Republican nomination. He's not a threat to anybody. Let's he just is, be clear. because he's what not. happens is, no, no, he is. Because what's going to happen is he's going to end up running one way or the other. He has made a statement saying that fact. That he is going to try to run one way or the other, whether he gets the nomination or not, which means he's going to split the Republican vote, which means uh, fucking, what's that? Ross, Ross Perot. Perot. Ross Perot, thank you. That prick split the vote and lost the vote for George Bush mm -hmm. against Clinton. Yep. And, and that's what the Republican think tank is thinking about Trump. So they're trying to get rid of him and discredit him and push him down as fast as they possibly can. And this is their very first opportunity to do so since he has announced his nomination. Yeah. Well, my here, – here, oh man, this is difficult because you both have various sides of Donald Trump. Todd, you have Donald Trump specifically. Sam, you have a Republican commentator. I'd like to say that this doesn't mean that I wouldn't go gamble on his casino because no, that would be fun. No, it would be fun. I think I'm going to have to go with Sam because here's the thing. Ultimately, you're both right. He has said some incendiary and really bad things, but it's Donald Trump. He's a reality show star. And actually, Ma, if I was Donald Trump and had that much money and I was on the stage and, and I was asked the question about when Megyn Kelly said, hey, you know, you said all these terrible things about women. I would have personally said something to the fact of like, yes, I did say these things. That's because I did it for our TV show, which everyone tuned into. That's I, because you're a better politician than Donald Trump. Well, that's – yes. But so, you know, he's doing these things to upset people. He's doing these things to intentionally rile up. And is he being a racist? Yes. Is he being a misogynist? Yes. But the fact that they're only finally saying something against him now, I guess I'll have to go with Sam. But uh, I, I find Donald Trump to be quite entertaining. So and you want you want Sam's people to get their ass kicked because they're anti Donald Trump, even though you want him to be entertaining? No, no, they're not saying anything against the races, but they're saying stuff against the women. They should be saying stuff against everyone, like, oh, he has offended the races. Uh, he's descended women. He's descended women of every race. You know, so I think they only to choose women as one reason why he should get, be shunned against is is bad because he should have been shunned against. By saying, hey, Mexicans are terrible people. You know, they're sending these murders and rapists across the board. They should have also stood up against that as well. Thank you for making my point in the most terrible way, but I agree with what you say, and thank you. Thank you for your vote. Sam Rineros, 2016. How uh, was Tal, that the terrible way? How was that? Such you were stuttering towards the end, and honestly, I was just... Well, get to the point. Get to, to it already. Figuring out what to say. <laughs> I'm going to vote for Jeff. I think I made my point already very clear in that. <laughs> Uh, how much I absolutely love Jeff's story. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's ridiculous. He's a federal judge. This is something that can actually affect our lives, uh, unlike this ridiculous red state, because nothing they do is going to make any difference at all because it's going to be uh, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's our next president. I won't go as far as saying that Hillary I will. I'm saying it. I'm saying it here and now. Look, the Republican Party is, is broken uh and schismed. I will agree that it is Hillary Clinton's race to lose. She is still a very unlikable person. No, I look. I, it is hers to lose. Given I, the choice right now, I'd vote for Bernie. Bernie really is really like him a lot. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the real big toss up is if Bernie Sanders can get the nomination. But right now, the I don't think fact so. is, Hillary Clinton is going to take it. Hillary Clinton is the next president because the Republican Party does not have a strong contender. They've they've They're fractured fresh. their own party. 
there's nothing there to go with. Federal judges ordering people to get married, on the other hand, that's a fucked up precedent. And I got to vote for that because as soon as that goes, if they allow that shit to stand, that then can become precedent and can affect our lives. I like your way of thinking because that's exactly what I was going to vote for. <laughs> I was going to vote for Jeff because that's absolutely 100% fucking insanity to allow a judge to tell somebody, hey, I don't like the way you're living your life, boy. You're going to marry that girlfriend. You can get her pregnant. Oh, I'm sorry. I know I'm totally interrupting you. But Bible verses? Yeah. What about separation of church and state? Mm. Fuck that guy. Sorry, Sam. Go ahead. I lost my train of thought. No, you said. So we're done. Boy, I don't like the way. I'll, I'll do it. Boy, <laughs> I don't like the way you're well, living your life. You got to marry your girlfriend. Well, I say oh, wait. That's... Let me interrupt you. Well, I say what I say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying now. This judge is fucking nuts. I mean, and we have him passing judgments on people when he's not supposed to do... You know, you're supposed to be penalized. You're supposed to pay fines, yeah. do some time, whatever. Not, hey, marry your 19-year-old girlfriend, and I want you to write the verses of the, of the Bible, which they're bullshit anyway. And so yeah. it'd be like me saying, well, Jeff, I need you to find a new girlfriend, and I would need you to start writing verses, chapters, paragraphs from the Harry Potter books. It's fucking crazy talk. Yeah. And so, therefore, this judge needs his, needs his ass kicked. That's right. I said Alrighty. it. So, with that, Jeff, you fucking win this week. Yeah. I keep dropping F bombs. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, where can they go to vote? That's right. You let us know. Facebook.com slash WTH Podcast. We're on Instagram, WTH Podcast. I guess I'll do it all. Email us at WTH Podcast One at gmail.com. We are on Twitter under WTH Podcast One as well. Follow us. You are. You are the people that we are catering to. Let us know your thoughts on who needs their ass kicked this week. Any comments, questions, anything. Anything, like Jeff needs a haircut. Jeff needs a haircut. Jeff needs Dang. to shave his beard off for the for the decency of humanity. I don't know what? how. Je- just... Jeff needs an ass wax. Because that would be awesome. For <laughs> whom? Not for really. me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those smooth butt cheeks now. No hair on them whatsoever. <laughs> I can just slide across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that'd be amazing! Can you imagine? It? So you've seen, you guys have all seen dogs when they put their their hind legs up and their front legs down, <laughs> and they scoot their ass on the floor. Can you imagine giving your dog an ass wax, then watching them do that? <laughs> it's just hilarious. Yeah, but they're doing that. They're doing that for worms, not for sheer enjoyment. Yeah, you wax the floor. Have you tried it? It's fun. I, I, I don't think I could try it. No, just try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to go down the hallway. We'll get a video going. of that. Post that on Facebook. <laughs> I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, what have we learned today, boys? I learned that everyone hates Donald Trump and anything associated with him. I would have to disagree. No, not everybody hates Donald Trump. Uh, they're getting there. We'll, uh, we'll see. I find him to be quite entertaining. I don't agree with a would single Would you hang view. out with him and drink with him? Like, I'd hang yes. out with him and drink with him. I'd, yeah, yes. That's, no, that's a lie. I'm I'm gonna, it. I might actually just end up decking apparently, him. Apparently, the things that I've learned are all lies. <laughs> so go <laughs> ahead, Sam. What I learned is that there are still people in authority trying to push their Bible thumping ways, and we have we have work to do. People, let's push back. Let's make them write Harry Potter can, verses. Can we force Texas to succeed? Succeed? Not, not succeed. succeed. We, we can push them to succeed, but they won't like it. They, they like to fail. They you like know what I mean? Not hard. succeed. 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 Yeah. I hate. I hate that those two words are so close. I would say at this point in time, because Texas economy is so large, there's no way for them to succeed. Because they'd be taking a huge chunk of our poor import export business. It'd be the same way if California were to be split into six states. It'd be a huge <laughs> fuck that clusterfuck. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like Texas and California are too big to even remotely be thought of leaving the union. Yeah, but nobody likes the Cowboys. Nobody likes the Rangers. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. You shut your, whoa. you shut your fucking <laughs> mouth. My, oh, I love that my wife in the corner immediately started yelling at me. <laughs> I love how you said that she's in the corner. Like Heather, get to your corner. <laughs> do you know what she was gonna do today? She was gonna go to the Cowboys training camp, which is in Santa Barbara right now. Or Oxnard. Well, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah, Santa Barbara just it sounds nicer. It does sound nice. <laughs> Oxnard sounds like a weird 1920s novel. It's the Oxnard incident. Right. And what I learned this week, I learned that apparently if you are a lawyer or a judge, you can invoke fantasy. Like either I'm going to invoke the Game of Thrones or invoke the Bible. But either way, it's not real. It's not real. I can just make up shit whatever I want. I learned that Donald Trump 
while entertaining, will never be the president, and that's a good thing. <laughs> I'd vote for him. Would you? Why not? No. My, first of all, in California, my vote doesn't matter. True. Right? Second of all, I kind of want to say, I voted for Trump. <laughs> no. Thirdly, if for some reason he were to win, it would be hilarious. It'd be hilarious for a minute until all of a sudden policy had to actually be made. You're like, oh, shit. We're going to build a wall. No, that's not how it works. What about for Canadians? They're white. They're I, want him, I want him to look at Supreme Court and be like, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, well, that happened.